So we are obviously very, very deep into the offseason. We're in a really sleepy part of the offseason at this point. And a lot of people could view this as kind of a boring time in fantasy football. But in reality, this is the perfect time for us as a community to really do a lot of hardcore deep dive research into what's happened over the past several seasons, who ended up being league winners, all kinds of values that you can find in fantasy drafts. This is what the month of June is all about in fantasy football. So for those of y'all who have been following my channel for a while now, you know that I post at least five and sometimes six videos per week. And a lot of it lately has just been about researching what's happened over the past several years and how to apply that stuff with this year and what I believe is going to be coming this year in fantasy football. So with a lot of this has come a lot of values that I believe are going to be found in later rounds of the draft and a lot of guys who I think have league winning potential in this year in fantasy football. This is something that I I think is actually probably the most underrated draft strategy in all of fantasy football right now. So when it comes to running back specifically, we all want to find either a great value, we want to find a league winning running back, or we just want one of the elite players, right? Well, when it comes to running backs, I found a really underrated strategy to go by when you're trying to look at running backs to pick in your draft. So what I want to do here today is I want to look at some of the most efficient running backs in the NFL with at least 90 carries in 2022 because I want that to be the baseline here. We don't want to look at guys who got 10 carries and averaged 10 yards a carry. It's like, that's that's ridiculous. We're not going to look at it like that. I want to got, look at guys with at least 90 carries who are some of the most efficient backs in the NFL in 2022. So obviously, as you can see on the screen here, you can see a lot of guys who are super highly drafted and who are no-brainers in every fantasy draft. Guys like Nick Chubb, you know, Aaron Jones, Ramondre Stevenson was last year. DeAndre Swift was super highly drafted last year. Aaron Jones, right? Travis Etienne. Like, these guys were very highly drafted last year. Most of the time, they went anywhere between rounds four or above, right? These types of guys are usually not there rounds five, six, seven. Although, Travis Etienne, I actually did get him in the fifth round last year in one of my ESPN leagues. But on this list also, you can see a couple of guys that were a little bit later round guys, right? You saw guys like Tony Pollard. Miles Sanders, J.K. Dobbins, Isaiah Pacheco. I mean, some of these guys are either really later round guys or they went undrafted. Isaiah Pacheco, a lot of times, went undrafted. He was a waiver wire player a lot last year. So there's some values to be had there. And some of those guys, all of them have in common that they were super efficient backs last year. Now, like I said, obviously some of those guys like Nick Chubb, Aaron Jones, Travis Etienne, they were or are now currently looked at as some of the elite options at running back in the NFL and in fantasy football. I mean, those are some of the more talented running backs in the league, either have been past tense or now currently are or still are. So a lot of those guys, right, like they're kind of no brainers in fantasy football drafts. But the other group of this is guys like Miles Sanders, JK Dobbins, Isaiah Pacheco. All of those guys have two things in common and they really once you think about it go hand in hand they were all very efficient and they all had top offensive lines in 2022 so pro football network comes out every year a couple of times a year with their offensive line rankings and last year before the start of the season they provided one and then they also followed that up with the final offensive line rankings at the end of 2022 they put that out there in january of 2023 and the top four offensive lines on Pro Football Network in 2022 were Philadelphia, Baltimore, Kansas City, and Green Bay. Now, if you notice, a lot of those guys that I just mentioned are coincidentally on there with some of the most efficient running backs in the NFL in 2022. When you look at Miles Sanders, he was excellent last year in fantasy. He was the RB13 finish, 14th in fantasy points per game, and averaged 4.9 yards per carry. Then you look down to J.K. Dobbins, who J.K. Dobbins is a player that I was saying last year not to draft J.K. Dobbins in fantasy drafts, and I think I was right for the most part, but when you look at a healthy J.K. Dobbins, he was 23rd in fantasy points per game, 5.7 yards per carry. I mean, that's super efficient, and we always know that J.K. Dobbins is a super efficient guy. One of the reasons is because he's obviously a very talented running back. But the other reason is because he has a top offensive line. Then you look down to Aaron Jones, who this year, people are kind of jumping ship off Aaron Jones, and I don't blame him necessarily. But last year, he was still 11th in fantasy points per game for running backs. And he had the running back nine finish. He averaged 5.3 
yards per carry, man. And then when you look at Isaiah Pacheco, he finished 36 in fantasy points per game, so not that impressive, but he averaged 4.9 yards per carry. And the difference here between Pacheco and those other guys is that Pacheco started to handle the majority of Kansas City's carries starting week 10. Now, the, obviously, the thing they all have in common is they all had top four offensive lines. So all those guys, the top four offensive lines supported nothing worse than 4.9 yards per carry for their main running back on their team. So what this does, obviously, is it leads to a higher fantasy ceiling. Now, obviously, not all of those guys see a ton of volume like a Derrick Henry or Nick Chubb does. But all those guys are super efficient with their touches, which means that they will provide some very good fantasy games. All of those guys had some big games last year in fantasy football. So now let's look at the top offensive lines in 2023, according to Pro Football Network. So in order from first to 10th, let's go down the list. Philadelphia, Cleveland, Detroit, Kansas City, Dallas, Baltimore, Atlanta, Green Bay, San Francisco, and Minnesota. Those are the top 10 offensive lines heading into 2023, according to Pro Football Network. Now, obviously, what we can take away from this list right here is obviously there's guys like Nick Chubb, B. John Robinson, and Christian McCaffrey who are in that list and fall under that category of great running backs and the ones who have great offensive lines. They're no-brainers in this year's draft, right? You're obviously going to want to take those guys very, very early because they provide such a high ceiling, not only because of their play, but because of their great offensive lines in front of them. But here's the thing about this. If you're drafting in either best ball leagues or even a traditional ESPN or Yahoo re redraft league. Let's say that you're drafting at the 108 or even further behind and you don't have the opportunity to grab those no-brainer guys. The guys that we mentioned, maybe someone even like a Jonathan Taylor, right? Or an Austin Eckler. Let's say that you don't have that opportunity to get one of those guys. One of the most underrated fantasy football draft strategies is to go after running backs who are in later round guys who have top tier offensive lines blocking for them. So there's a couple of different reasons that you could do this and why you should do this. So first of all, let's look at it from a best ball perspective right now. So if you're in best ball, what you wanna do anyways is you wanna go wide receiver early because best ball on underdog is a three wide receiver format. So you need to go out and grab yourself a Tyree kill. You need to go out and grab yourself a Chris Olave or a T Higgins. You need to go out and grab yourself a Christian Watson, right? You need to go out and grab yourself some very good wide receivers to get that going because it is also at one flex. So the potential chances that you could be having four wide receivers scoring for you that week are pretty decent. Well, the good thing about this particular strategy is out of the top 10 rated offensive lines for 2023, there are six out of those top 10 running backs who are going as the running back 17 or even later. So this means you can get yourself two top 13 to 14 wide receivers in the first two rounds. Maybe get a third wide receiver in either the third or the fourth round. Get a quarterback or a running back one and get yourself an Aaron Jones or a J.K. Dobbins in round five. That's what you can do here on best ball. You can get yourself an Alexander Madison in either the fifth or the sixth round right now, but you need to draft him today because his price is rising. And if you want to get in on an underdog best ball draft, use code FFN at sign up and they will match your first deposit up to $100. You could also get yourself a David Montgomery, a DeAndre Swift, and Isaiah Pacheco in the seventh round, guys. These are super, super great values because the reality is none of the guys here with these top offensive lines, aside from the guys like Nick Chubb, Christian McCaffrey, B. John Robinson, really none of the other guys are super bona fide, bulletproof, elite level prospects who have elite ceilings. Well, the beauty of it is they're not drafted like that. You can get them in later rounds and take a shot on those guys because the reality is that top offensive lines produce very efficient runners very, very consistently. They don't have to be your running back one or even your running back two in some cases. What they are, are their high upside running back twos or threes. And for the price you're getting them at right now, that's exactly what the beauty of it is. Because when I come back to a guy like Isaiah Pacheco, 
When you look at just his season-long finish, it's not that impressive. But when you split that season into two halves, it's way more impressive, and it provides us so much more encouragement knowing that he has a great offensive line blocking for him and the fact that he saw way more volume and was way more efficient in that second half of the season. And if you want to know the importance of why you need to split a season into two halves and how you can find a league winner by doing that, click on this video right here.